Hi, it's Russ from the Expert Sites, and I'm with Lee from PreSonus. Hey, guys. Hey, Russ. Hey, Lee, we've got something very special today. This was announced a week ago. This is the 64S. We're going to talk about this today, but this is one of four new mixers, correct? Yeah, so we've kind of had a refresh of our Series 3 mixers. This is the flagship, so this is the 64S. This is an unbelievably powerful mixer, um, but we've got four new mixers, so... Uh, the other three mixers are all 32 channel mixers. So we've got um, a 16 fader version, still a 32 channel mixer. Uh, it's called a 32 SC. Um, and you'll see the picture on the screen now. Yeah. Uh, we, Q edit. Q edit. And then the next one is the 32 SX, which is a 24 fader board, but it's still got 32 uh, line inputs, uh, sorry, mic line inputs on the, on the actual board itself. So it's a really nice footprint. You still get a lot of uh, I.O. physically on the board, yep. plus it's a 32-channel desk. Then we've got the 32S, um, which is a 32 fader with 32 mic line on the back. Then you've got this guy. So there's there's four in total, and this is a 64S. So, And you've made just – so I understand that. I'm confused, and you've just told me, and you know what you're talking about. Yeah. Is there a very simple way for people to work out which one they need? I know this one is like yeah. – they all need this one, actually. Let's be honest. But if <laughs> – no, but, but joking apart uh, – 332s, what's the unique difference in, in a nutshell between all three of them? Yeah, I really think it's down to footprint and how many faders you need. The smallest one, which is 16 faders, yep. touch-sensitive faders, and obviously every model works in DAW mode as well. Right. So it depends kind of do you need 32 faders for your live show or for your studio mixes, or are you happy to work with the 16? You know, for me, I'm kind of a, more of a 16 fader guy. I like to flick through banks and have the more compact footprint of the mixer. But the important thing is that they all have 32 channels, the, the other versions, and they all have the same processing power for um, you know processing fat channel on every input and now on every output as well. So they're right. all as powerful, just, yes. it's just the footprint and how many faders you need really. Okay, but mm -hmm. the I.O. is the same on all of them? No, it, it's uh, slightly different on all of them. Um, obviously, this one is the biggest, got the biggest I.O. This one's got um, 16 mix outputs on XLR. Uh, you've got 32 mic line inputs on this one as well. When you go down to the smaller one, you've only got 16 gotcha. uh, mic gotcha. line. So and it changes between versions. So basically you're trying to do it so people aren't paying for features they don't need. That they don't need, exactly. But they still get the they still get the, the, they still get the core of the, the DSP uh, power. The, yeah, the yeah. core of the, the product. And it's imp you. important to mention you're not sharing uh, DSP features between channels. You know, every channel, every input channel has full DSP. Isn't it 576? Channels of yeah, DSP, yeah, it's insane, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's 520, something like that, uh, amount of processing. But again, you're not sharing. It's on every input and every output, which we'll, we'll go back to that. But, you know, you've got your uh, vintage emulated plugins as well. So state space model plugin versions of, you know, really popular compressors. I saw that, the sexy Paul Tech looking and the sexy, uh, we have lots to say of, looking, we can't actually say. Lots of English and American themed Yes, that's, processors. That's, that's the politically correct term without you getting sued <laughs> or everybody else in the business but getting what, sued. What's really cool with that now is we can have... English themed uh, compression on your mix outputs and your nice. mix and stuff. So you really get it. You're able to tap into kind of studio style effects for the, the live environment. Fantastic. Can you use them in door mode as well? Can you actually mix through this? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you can, I know you can, I know you can use the like door mode for, for transport and the faders and stuff, but then does the DSP, can you use the DSP power of this insight when you're using it with studio one or another door or, or would that only happen if you actually hard lined it back in through the audio inputs? Yeah. I mean, when you press door mode, it turns into a completely different beast. It's a control surface. It's a control then. surface. So it's, yeah, it's, so but the, what's really cool on that point though, is if you record your show, uh, through a capture session right? and um, that will save your, your session, um, your audio, but it also saves your processor settings. And now what you've got is a plug-in version for your So DAW. when you're mixing in the studio, it's taken the version that you used in the in live and you can still use that or swap it out. So your vintage EQs and compressors will now come up in plug-in version uh, in your computer with your mix, basically the same as your live mix. But it's... Um, you know, you can go and adjust that afterwards. Yeah. Can I say uh, two things? The one thing I wanted to say first is uh, we've already posted to social media about this, but this is actually sexier in real life than it is in the pictures. I know that, that, that obviously a great photographer took the photos, but if you order one of these based on the pictures, you are not going to be disappointed because I, I love the new black finish on it. I think, yeah. I think it looks really pro and really solid. I love the even love the end cheeks. It's just the whole thing just has a really great footprint. Uh, but secondly, I just wanted to talk about the, the, the Studio Live in, in the early days. People didn't quite get, but I just feel as if the whole industry is getting to a point where the line between studio yeah. and live is becoming we had a big discussion on the expert team yesterday we in our meeting saying that 
this board is going to be equally at home in your studio as it is taking out with a band, isn't it? And you guys yeah. have been kind of banging that drum for many years, haven't you? Yeah. I don't think people got it, did they, in the, in the early yeah. days? Yeah, I think people are definitely still set into mindsets. You know, here's my live gear, here's my studio gear. But like truly this, uh, even our last version of these mixers, um, they're your audio interface, they're yeah. your DAW controller, and they're your live mixer. Um, but then that means, you know, the live mixer part of it can be used in studio for, you know, live monitoring. And you can use the iPad controls and iPhone controls for, you know, people in different booths setting their own headphone levels and things like that. So you can set all your monitor mixes. Yeah, you know, so that's in the studio. Also with your um, stage boxes, you know, you could have uh, different NSB stage boxes on a network for different rooms. And then from within the control panel in here, you can, you know, take inputs from different rooms. So it really will work in your studio. Then when you bring it to the live stage, you're using stage boxes, ear mix on networks as well for personal mixers. So I'm guessing also colleges and in institutions like that would really benefit from something like this where they've got lots of rooms and they can just keep plumbing it around the building, couldn't they, with all those different things using... Because you've got these really cool stage boxes. I mean, we call them stage boxes, but basically they could be the same as wall boxes in a studio. You've got all this I.O. Yeah, You can exactly. access from... You can have multiple stage boxes in different locations, and then you can access them from a list on here. Wow. And you can select the different inputs to arrive back as your input on the Studio Live. Um, each input channel, when you select it, you'll see that you've got four sources. So you can select between listening to the analog source, which will be here. All right. Um, from your network, which will be from a stage box. Yeah. Um, from USB, which is your computer, or from an SD card from the multi-track on SD. So you've got a 34 track recorder built in on SD. Uh, so that means you can record directly to here without using a computer. When you bring that to the live world, it means you, you don't have that um, extra yeah. piece of gear you need yeah. to bring. You're just recording multi-track WAVs to here. Um, and then we, I have some guys who are actually using this in studio, like the old tape machine setup where they record the band live play it back in sound check mode and they're actually processing things live. Oh, that's so, a great idea. So yeah, sort of sound no check computer. Though. But it's 64 IO, isn't it, in terms of recording? So we, could... we've updated the firmware uh, on the on all of our previous Series 3 mixers and the new ones. Now when you update to this firmware, you get 64 by 64 USB that's and insane. 64 by 64 AVB. Um, so yeah, with this particular board, the 64S, now you're recording direct 64 individual so that's a, channels. That's, pretty, that's a pretty monster audio interface in its, of its own right, isn't it? Absolutely, that, yeah, which, I mean, On its own would be pretty powerful. Can I just ask you a question, because I've just noticed this, now I'm looking at it. So I thought when you bought it in the studio and you wanted to get like hardlining, you'd have to go all through the, the I.O. again. But here you've got the USB button, so if you hit that button... You can route the USB from your door straight back through this, can you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's individual channels as well. So, you know, channel one could be from the network. Channel two come through, could oh, be from the right? USB channel. Channel three could be from an SD card. And what's really cool is if you hold down one of these buttons, yeah. it tells you where everything is is, um, your finger hurts. is, is rooted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. Forgive that joke. So, so, so basically, you could have like 16 channels coming back off your door and then have the, the drummer coming through on channels and you could monitor both at the same time. Yeah. I'm, so it's like, so it's, an in, it's a true inline console. It, this but just, it's using technology to do the inline That's work. why we call it Flex DSP because there's so many different ways to configure the console. Uh, a lot of people use maybe um, a full multi-track controlling it from door mode yes maybe you know yeah. six, 60 tracks from a computer and then they return that on a left right when they flip back to the live mixer and you've just got two channels got you from your full DAW mix and then you flip back to DAW mode and you're controlling individual channels from your DAW session maybe you've recorded strings on your album or something and yes. you actually get to bring that back to the gig you know that's insane. So just just so that people who've never experienced this before uh, and and tried to try, tried to get this, I'm just going to try and get this down into the very simplest form. Basically, you have loads of analog inputs, and you have all this flex DSP where you can do it. So it's got built-in EQ, compression, gates, uh, analog emulations, as well as digital stuff. Mm -hmm. Then, so that's the first thing it is. Then it has a monster amount of outputs for monitoring life, like matrix sort of type outputs, doesn't it? Is it yeah, 32, so, 32 outs does it have? Yeah, so on the on the 64S, you've got, along the side here, you've got your yeah. flex mix um, buttons. So you yeah. can select between 16 mixes here, but when you press it twice, you actually go into a bank of another 16 mixes. So you've got 32 mixes now. So either for live or in the studio, you can do quite complex mix. Exactly, routine. and these are configurable to become uh, an OGS mix, 
or they can be a subgroup out, or they can be a matrix mix output. And am I right in thinking that people can then control them from their own from an iPhone or an absolutely, iPad? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely themselves. So yeah. you get no more of the guitarist or the drummer saying, I can't hear enough in my ears. And also what's cool there is you can go in and you can set permissions so the drummer just controls his OGS mix output and can't touch Well, the permission I'd say is the drummer can't control well, let's anything. Let's not go there. That's the permission. I'm a drummer. <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. I, and, you, and you understand how this works. And this bit here as well, of course, it's on the pitches. You put your iPad, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can kind of use, there's also some mounts on the back here where you can mount some iPads for extra screens. Oh, great. So you can use the iPad in two different ways. It's like a, a remote control. Or you can actually hit the sync button, yeah. which turns the iPad app into an extra screen for the desk, really, because when you hit a select channel, the screen will follow. Okay. Um, and then on the screen, you can have maybe your processing on one screen. Mm. You could have all your input metering on another screen and maybe all of your um, OGS masters on another screen here. And as many screens kind of... And as it, is it working just as a screen or can you actually use the touch functions of the well, iPad? That's the, that's the beauty. It's full touch. So it's oh, it's touch. So it's not just showing you what's appearing on a screen. It actually means that you can then do your EQ on a touch screen. Exactly. And what's, what's really cool with that is you've kind of three ways to work with the board. You can kind of use the more hands-on uh, analog knobs way yeah. to control the processing. Or you can use this kind of hybrid way where you touch and control with this kind of center control knob. You can touch any feature and use this, or you can use full touch with, with iPads, your extra screens. With iPads, so, so different ways to and work. Android as well, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So it's not yeah. just an iOS yeah. thing. Well, I, I was interested. These are pretty solid, aren't they? You, they're not flimsy at all. These knobs. They're, in fact, you need to. It's bodybuilder stuff. Isn't uh, yeah, it? I mean the board in general is. is it's built know, like it's a, built really well. Built you know, like something that it's you made have in last. the garden. We don't we don't we don't get a lot of problems with uh, you know reliability and stuff like that. We build them so they so they work and you can rely on them on the road. A couple of questions that have come up, and I think it's worth addressing. And I think we uh, we knew we've addressed the answer on the expert sites, but let's just talk it through. First question that came up is why USB in 20, 2019? Is 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 there any reason for that? Uh, is it? Um, I think even though there's lots of different formats now, USB is still the most widely used. Well, it's 55% according to a study of 2,000 people. Okay, well, there you go. So it, it, it kind of, it doesn't rule out, you know, half of the market that already have some older computers yeah. and newer computers. And it works really well for us. Um, it's really stable for us. Um, we, we use Capture software, which is a very stripped down recording software. So it's rock solid. Live. So it's really rock solid. Yeah. Um, it runs in the background while you're doing your mix. And, it, you know, it's just really stable and it works for us. The other question that came up is why 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 are you limiting it to forty four and forty eight? Is is that again because that's the most used format out there and trying to keep the price down? And yeah, stuff? I mean, again, I think it is the most used format. The majority of people you ask, they rarely because of um, saving hard drive space and stuff like that yeah. will actually record at ninety six. Yeah, um, and then it allows us to free up more processing where we think it's kind of more important because uh, our audio audio quality is really nice with class A pre's yeah. and really nice converters. Um, so we're happy enough with that and then we can free up all this process and you power. keep the channel count up on the USB interface as well can't you because you can get 80 channels of, of USB and again oh, we yeah. don't we don't yeah. have to share processing either no we can keep it all one to one processing on your inputs and your outputs great fine so this one's uh, streeting or, or, re or, or, or suggested 3999 yeah, yeah we're trying to keep it in below below the 4000 mark so again it's 64 inputs um, 32 mix outputs 8 effects masters so it's a massive amount of io massive amount of power for for, for that price range and then there's lots of ecosystem products that, that run with this so it really makes it a complete product with your stage boxes over avb and also your ear mix lee i think it's a winner uh, thanks for coming yeah thank you very much i'm really excited about particularly the 64 it's a it's a massive machine for, for the uh, great price you know i was going to use that g changer word but i won't because that's always a terrible it's overused but i think this as i say it's 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 beautiful, uh, and the features feature set's fantastic. And as I say, a great price. Uh, what's not to like? Yeah. So do check out the full range on personas.com as well because you'll get more details of all the I/O and different features for the desk. So thanks, Lee. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you.